Hi, and today I would like to talk to you about hand rules and how they are used to determine various interactions between currents, magnetic fields and relative motion. So stay watching this space as I explain to you the magnetism hand rules. And the first hand rule that you may want to know involves understanding what is the magnetic field around a current bearing wire. So this is going to be my wire and I am going to represent it to have a current going upwards. How do I determine the magnetic field around that? And the trick here is to use your right hand. And you grab your hand around the wire and your thumb will point in the direction of the current. The fingers will therefore go in the direction of the magnetic field. So if your conventional current is up, from the perspective of you, my fingers are going around in an anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Similarly speaking, if my hand is going in this direction, my current is going toward this direction, you can see that my fingers, relative to you, are moving in a clockwise direction. So that is the right hand grip rule to understand magnetic fields around a current bearing wire. The next rule involves the solenoid. The solenoid is basically a tightly wound coil of wire. If you apply what I just mentioned to you, then you can determine the magnetic field running through a coil. And again, the hand you use for this particular rule is again your right hand. In this case, you grab your hand around the coil with your right hand, and in this case, your thumb is going to point towards what will be the North Pole. Your fingers now represent what the direction of the current is. So if my current is going in, let's say, at this terminal and out in that terminal, and the wires are winding around this way, my fingers represent the direction of the current, my thumb will automatically point what is the North Pole. Another way of thinking about it is the magnetic fields that run right through the center of the coil will run in that direction, leaving here at the North and entering back at the South. The third set of rules involves both motors and generators. And this one often has a lot of confusion because there are a number of hand rules around the place that try to describe the relationship between current bearing wires, ordinary wires where we have a, a EMF generated and the magnetic field and relative motion. And to help us to understand that, I'm using these two ice cream containers to show you the magnetic field. So in this case, this is going to be my North Pole and this is going to be my South Pole. And I want to first demonstrate to you Fleming's hand rules, which are often found in a variety of texts. And the fingers that we're going to use is a grip like this. And first I'm going to use Fleming's left hand rule in terms of motors. And as you know, a motor is where a motor effect is where you have a current bearing wire in a magnetic field will experience a force. So here's my wire and I'm going to place it in my magnetic field. And my magnetic field, of course, is running from that direction to that direction. So how do I use Fleming's left hand rule? Well, the first thing you need to use is just your finger is going to represent the direction of the magnetic field. So that's going to go like this. As you can see, my middle finger here is now pointing towards you. The next thing I want to do is show the direction of the current. And I'm going to make my current go towards you. As you can see, that will be my middle finger here. Then the force that this will experience will be an upward force as shown by my thumb. So the thumb is the direction of the force. So that is using Fleming's left hand rule. If I reverse my fingers, we now have Fleming's right hand rule. And now we're not dealing with the motor effect, but electromagnetic induction. And as a result, if I move this wire in a magnetic field, I'm going to generate an EMF. But what is its direction? Well, again, we use the same fingers. Again, my finger, my index finger, is going to represent the magnetic field. So that's going to point in this direction. My the thumb is going to represent the motion. Remember, it's connected to motion again, and so I'm going to push this thumb upwards. My third finger here is going to represent now the direction of the EMF and thus the direction of the conventional current. So if I move my wire upwards, as you can see, I'm going to get a EMF in the direction towards me. And so as a result, that current is going to go towards me. So that is Lemming's right hand rule to, in terms of Faraday's law, the generation of an electrical current due to motion of a wire in a magnetic field. 
So that's Fleming's hand rules. Now I often try to teach my students a slight deviation from Fleming's hand rules. And I want to make the point that these rules aren't sort of set in stone as long as you are consistent with the, the procedure. So I'm going to show you another type of hand rules that I think is a little bit more intuitive. And like I said, you don't, if you learn Fleming's hand rules, fine, but hopefully this will help you as well. In this case, I'm going to use my right hand for the motor effect and I'm going to use my left hand for electromagnetic induction. And I'm going to use the same principles. So here's my wire and I'm going to have again the current going out towards you. And I'm going to use my fingers to represent the magnetic field. And why I do that is that the direction of my fingers, multiple lines, multiple fingers, makes it easy to remember what is a magnetic field. So I'm going to point that in this direction. I'm going to move my current towards you. So I'm going to move my hand flat. So my thumb is pointing you. So now my thumb is the direction of the current. And then I, you can see my palm is facing upwards. And just like you were to slap something, that will be the direction of the force. And so the wire would move up. And that's consistent with what I had before with Fleming's left hand rule. But I think it's more intuitive because I have multiple magnetic fields. I have a single wire. And you think of force when you slap something, you use this side of your hand. And so that is my right hand slap rule. I sometimes tell it to my students. What about electromagnetic induction? Well, again, you use your hand, but this time you use your left hand. And in this case, again, the procedure is the same. The magnetic field is going to be, again, in that direction. Now, what direction am I going to move my wire? Now, I'm going to move my wire in the upward direction because I'm moving it upward. So again, you can see my palm is going to be my motion. It's going to push upwards. Well, where's my thumb pointing to? My thumb is pointing towards me. So therefore, the EMF is going towards me. And so that is the direction. And so you can see, again, that's consistent with Fleming's hand rule. If I apply this to a coil of wire, like so, now you can see I can use the same idea with the motor effect and also with electromagnetic induction. So imagine my current in this case is going towards you on this side and of course it's going this way on the other side. With my right hand rule, again, I have a current going towards you so therefore the force is up. This one, my current is coming towards me, it's going to go down and that's going to rotate it and that's of course the motor effect as it turns in an electric motor. If I were to rotate it in this magnetic field, I will generate an EMF. Now, of course, the generation of an EMF is really maximum when the motion of this is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. So the motion that I will cause, I will generate an EMF, but how do I de determine the direction? Now, again, I'm going to have this coming upwards. I'm going to use my left hand. And so because my magnetic field is in this direction, you can see my EMF is going to be towards me on this side. But of course, on this side, it's the reverse. It's going to go in the other direction. And so I'm going to generate an EMF in this direction. So I'm going to generate a current in that direction if I were to rotate it that way. So there you have it. The hand rules in terms of a magnetic field around a wire, the, hang, the magnetic field around a coil, and then using either the right hand and left hand in terms of the palms, as I just explained to you, or if Fleming's hand rules to determine uh, the, the various relationships between electric, current, magnetic fields, and motion. It really doesn't matter whether you use Fleming's rules or the other hand rules. I think what's important here, as long as you're consistent. So if you want to use Fleming's rules, then stay consistent, whether it is by the motor effect or whether it is by electromagnetic induction. Similarly, if you want to use the palm rule, like I explained to you, use your right hand for motor effect and use your left hand for induction. And it's important as long as you stay consistent with one of those two. I hope that's helped you understand the hand rules. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care. Bye for now.